Hi, this is a video overview of the work done by the Structured Task Force, which came together as a volunteer group that is chaired by Dinesh George from Bangalore, India, Ron Quint from LA, Mohan Nanjadan, London, Harlem Salim, Jakarta, Darren Gutierrez, Chicago, Todd Asad, Dallas, Valder Koa, Boston, and myself at Anton out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. We came together with prayer, fasting, biblical study, lots of deliberation, lots of review of the materials that were produced not only through the 33 different surveys, but also from many of the uh, extra feedback that we received from, from many of the regions as well as uh, many people that have written in. Uh, having reviewed all of that, prayed through all of that, and discussed all of that, we endeavored to look at different structures that would help us be more collaborative, more connected, more cooperative, more trusting, more transparent, more effective, more unified for Jesus. And while we get, and we knew all along, that structure doesn't solve problems, it can promote the interaction of our brotherhood in such a way that it would promote all of those aforementioned ideas. And so to begin, we looked first at ICOC 2.0, as we now affectionately call it. In our current structure, we have, praise God, 108,000 disciples in 680 churches, organized chiefly in regions, 33 regions, sometimes 34 regions, depending when our next region comes on board. But for the sake of these slides, we'll, we'll call it 33 regions. And in the New Testament, we also see that the regions seem to be the chief organizing principle for the churches, whether that region be Macedonia, Achaia, Judea, or, or even um, Asia. Now, the 33 regions are not the only organizing entity for our fellowship. There are two other organizing entities, and they include 14 mission societies as well as nine service teams. And while we recognize the deep and integral role of both the service teams and the mission societies, for the sake of simplicity and clarity, for our purposes on this task force, we limited the scope of our discussion and the different iterations of different organiza organization where we keep the mission societies and the service teams constant and in place, but simply look at the different ways that we can look at the organizing principles of the regions, of the churches, represented in global governance by different support groups. And so, keeping that in sight, our 33 regions send forth and appoint 125 delegates. Each region sends a delegate for every thousand members in their region that produces roughly 125 delegates at a global meeting that occurs typically annually. Many of those delegates are invited to bring other guests and often bring their wives too to be able to form an annual meeting of global governance where we typically vote on policies, procedures, different practices to be able to review what the last four or five years of votes are, you can look at icocleaders.org uh, to see the activity of the delegates. The delegates are also supported by the service teams at a annual meeting. That annual meeting is often called the ICOC leadership meeting, and it includes the three service teams that are New Testament offices. That would be elder, evangelist, and teacher. All the members of those three service teams congregate, as well as the chairman of all nine service teams. They come together uh, to work on, on papers or reviews and suggestions that would be then sent to the delegates, where the delegates would have uh, final decision-making authority. Delegates typically meet in the fall every year, and the ICOC leadership group, the, the service teams that collaborate, typically meet in the spring. And then one last thing to recognize in our structure, undefined in many ways as it is, is that this group is guided and organized by the chairman of the three main service teams. Again, the service teams that are represented by New Testament offices. 
and that would be evangelist, elder, and teacher. The chairman of each of those three come together to be able to set agenda and organize the different meetings of the ICOC leadership group as well as the delegates. It's important to note that all of this work done by the evangelist, elder, and teacher chairman and a lot of what is done by the ICOC leadership group is typically undefined leadership that is filling in the, the vacuum that uh, exists. And while much great work is being done, that work is not reviewed and that work is not necessarily clearly defined. That's part of what came into view as models, what we now call ICOC 3.0 came into view. There are three different options or three different iterations of an ICOC 3.0 model that our, our uh, task force deliberated upon and uh, ultimately proposed. Uh, here is version A of the, the different iterations. Version A uh, recognizes the 680 churches and also recognize that from time to time it may be necessary for a representative of all 680 churches to have an opportunity to weigh in on a vote or a decision-making process. This model includes the idea of a virtual Congress that would include those 680 representatives. However, where the, the broader representation makes it more representative, of course, it makes it more difficult to deliberate. And so the model also includes a delegate group, which again would be brought forth by regional, uh, regional appointments. Again, 125 delegates, similar to 2.0. However, in this system, the delegates would not meet globally each year, globally each year, but rather meet one year globally, the next continentally in a configuration of five or six continents, and thirdly, missionally, that is, delegates from first world churches would connect with delegates from third world churches where they have support to be able to deepen those ties. That delegates group would also have important subcommittees that would do vital work, including working with service teams, working with different executive groups, working with mission societies. The Structure here would also include an assembly. An assembly looks similar to what we'd have seen in 2.0 as the ICOC leadership grouping. The assembly would include now not just the three service teams of evangelist elders and teachers, but also all 33 regional chairmen, which don't always participate in the ICOC leadership group. And in addition to that, the leaders of the largest churches in our movement, those churches with a thousand members or more, uh, I, I believe represent somewhere over 40% of our total membership. That assembly would meet in the spring to guide and direct and provide resources to the delegates who would meet in the fall. And then finally, an executive committee selected by the three service teams in the assembly uh, would guide matters uh, and they would also be reviewed by the assembly. Option B is 680 churches, again, organized by 33 regions. That remains constant throughout, by the way. But in this case, the global governance is a bit more narrow, and it is the actual 33 regional chairmen who come together as the representatives. Those 33 chairmen would have opportunities to deliberate more carefully and come to collaborative decision-making processes, the, the grouping and the, uh, the gathering of them would also include their wives, as it would in any of these models, by the way. Uh, also then, this group of representatives, while they would be a decision-making board, they would be guided by an executive team of five to seven elders, evangelists, teachers, or administrators. That executive team would be appointed directed and reviewed by a board of directors. They would be majority elders. They would have a three-year term vote uh, voted in by the, the representatives. And their most important function would be this oversight of the executive team. This would be a careful implementation of leadership whereby leadership would be clearly defined, clearly appointed, and clearly reviewed. 
it is a, a smaller model to promote not only greater deliberation, but also the recognition that the regional chairmen are, are typically the ones that are helping to drive the initiatives as they really are put into place in each of their respective regions. And then finally, option C. Again, 680 churches, three, 33 regions. Uh, this time, rather than the delegates coming together as representatives of the regions for the decision-making processes and policies, procedures, etc., they would be coming together now with a different focus. And they would be coming together now as a different configuration. They would come together now as 33 region building teams that would include minimum the region chairman, the campus coordinator, and the youth and family coordinator. Uh, this would promote greater diversity of people at the meeting. Uh, but if a region has greater than 3,000 members, then that region would also have an additional representative sent along as per their dis discretion. This group would meet one year in a continental configuration and then in another year globally. Uh, this group would have as a feature of it five very important subcommittees that would be doing a great deal of work. Uh, those subcommittees would include uh, the Executive Review Committee, again a committee that would appoint and review an executive team. I'll talk about the executive team in just a moment. Uh, it would also have a mission society subcommittee that would analyze and make recommendations to the, the 14 mission societies to make sure that there is equitable distribution of resources as well as funding and training uh, to all 14 mission societies. Uh, they would also have subject matter experts from among these 140 that would work together in a unity group, which would work on conflict resolution, as well as promoting unity. And of course, a communications group to uh, give a clear voice to the movement, as, as well as a subcommittee that would be liaison and also a review of the service team to keep the service teams uh, focused and uh, in working in a, uh, a fine manner. And then finally, the executive team as in all of the models, would be a group of people that would wake up each morning uh, really looking at the global idea of bringing Jesus to the whole world in a way that is healthy and unified and glorifying to the name of God. And this executive team would be, in all cases, appointed by a, a review board, uh, in this case as well, and then, of course, reviewed by a review board. The benefit in all of these models is that uh, that would no longer have a undefined leadership or leadership simply rising up to fill a vacuum, but very clearly defined leadership that would be given very certain tasks and uh, guided with very clear directives to, to help uh, bring us to a place uh, where we can be uh, better in our cooperation, collaboration, connection, love, transparency, unity. That would be a, a similar uh, idea in all of the models that we have here. Again, all of these models are able for you to be reviewed on icocleaders.org. Uh, there's also some uh, background and some description of all of these. I would encourage you to, to go there and take a look and I look forward to, to seeing everybody. It's really gonna be great to see everybody in Chicago soon. Thank you.